The United States today has a population of just over 330 million people, with the majority of these living within settlements that lie within the eastern half of the country. This is a long-standing impact of centuries of predominantly European settlers migrating across the Atlantic Ocean and establishing themselves in new towns and cities along the eastern seaboard. Comparatively, much fewer settlements exist in the western half of the nation, with the only notable exception being the coastal communities clinging to the Pacific shoreline from California in the south to Washington state in the north. However, a little over two centuries ago, in the year 1800, the population density of the United States looked markedly different. Back then, only 5.3 million Americans lived in 16 states that were bordered by the Atlantic Ocean to the east and the Appalachian Mountains to the west. Beyond that, lay a vast uncharted wilderness of grassland plains, snow-capped mountains and arid deserts, which were inhabited by thousands of native tribes who had called this land their home for millennia. In a matter of just a handful of decades, this entire region would be opened up and explored by prospective white settlers coming from the east, yearning for a chance to better themselves in this new land of opportunity. This is how the United States expanded westwards. The expansion of the United States began almost immediately following the attainment of independence from Britain in the late 18th century. The Treaty of Paris of 1783 formally acknowledged the newly created republic and established its borders, largely based on what had been inherited from the previously British 13 colonies, but now also included a vast tract of land stretching westwards to the Mississippi River, which had hardly been seen by any American except for a few hardy frontiersmen. One such figure was Daniel Boone, who in the late 1760s ventured out into this hitherto unknown land. Boone was aware of the Cumberland Gap, a pass through the mountains which had been long used by the native peoples to cross the Appalachians. He made the pass more accessible to pioneers and later established the settlement of Boonesboro in what is now Kentucky in 1775, setting the precedent for future western expansion. These tentative explorations by frontiersmen such as Boone were made easier in 1787 when the Northwest Ordinance was enacted by Congress. This established the new nation's first ever organized incorporated territory, which stretched from the Great Lakes in the north to the Ohio River in the south and the Mississippi River in the west to Pennsylvania in the east. In the last decade of the 18th century, a slow, steady trickle of settlers made their way westward into these newly established parts of the country. So much so that two new states were formally admitted to the Union, with Kentucky joining in 1792 and Tennessee in 1796. Despite the endeavors of these early pioneers, a greater, more concerted effort would be needed by the United States as a whole if it was to expand more thoroughly beyond the natural confines of the Appalachians. In 1803, as Europe was bracing itself for the coming Napoleonic Wars, France decided to sell its vast colonial land holdings in North America to the United States. This was completed for $15 million under the terms of the Louisiana Purchase and included an immense swathe of land from the western banks of the Mississippi River all the way to the high peaks of the Rocky Mountains. The following year, President Thomas Jefferson's administration commissioned a scientific and cartographic expedition to explore and map the newly acquired territory. Meriwether Lewis and William Clark, along with 40 companions, journeyed across the Louisiana Territory and reached the Pacific Ocean in 1805. This accomplishment quickly sparked an idea in the American psyche that their nation would one day stretch from coast to coast. This concept, which would later be termed as Manifest Destiny, would come to define the efforts of the American people in their push westwards throughout the 19th century. Progress in this endeavor was initially slow, but settlements gradually began to emerge on the southern shores of the Great Lakes in the 1810s and 1820s, with the town of Chicago being founded in 1833. Further to the west, across the Mississippi River, the frontier remained a wild and dangerous place, which attracted only a very few who were desperate or brave enough to endure it. 
Amongst these were the mountain men, who plied the great rivers of the region, earning a living as hunters and collecting animal furs, which were highly valuable commodities during the first half of the 19th century. Men such as Hugh Glass and Jim Bridger were instrumental in gaining knowledge of the region's terrain and waterways, which went some way to help establish the earlier settlements on this part of the frontier. These typically took the form of fortified trading posts, which served as regional hubs for the burgeoning fur trade. Gradually, overland routeways emerged to connect these scattered settlements with one another, which subsequently developed into the earliest pioneer trails. These were nothing more than marked and mapped paths that allowed would-be settlers in wagon trains to attempt the journey out to the fertile Willamette Valley in Oregon that had been discovered by the Lewis and Clark expedition some years earlier. Despite the enthusiasm and drive of the fledgling American nation to expand across this vast, unmapped western wilderness, these lands were not simply laying vacant for the United States to claim as their own. For millennia, hundreds if not thousands of Native American nations had called this land their home and the encroachment of white settlers from the east had created a complex relationship between the two groups, which was often marked by tension and hostility. In the spirit of fostering better relations, based upon their founding principles of liberty, equality and justice, the United States government signed multiple treaties with many of the Native American nations, promising to protect their lands from prospective settlers. Nevertheless, in 1830, the US government led by President Andrew Jackson, passed the Indian Removal Act, which effectively nullified all the previous treaties by making clear their intentions to settle the southern region around the Appalachian Mountains. The five Native American tribes who inhabited this area, the Cherokee, Muscogee, Seminole, Chickasaw and Choctaw, were then ordered to vacate their land and move west of the Mississippi River to a newly formed Indian nation. In what became known as the Trail of Tears, tens of thousands of Native Americans were forcibly displaced from their homelands and made to endure abysmal conditions as they were marched westwards with thousands dying en route. The maltreatment, suffering and duplicity inflicted on the Native American peoples would sadly become a defining and enduring aspect of America's continuing westward expansion that would last well into the early 20th century. While the initial migrations of the early 19th century saw settlers slowly drift westwards, it was only in the second half of the 1840s that this began to increase exponentially. This was owed to two almost simultaneous developments. The first occurred in May 1846, when the United States declared war on Mexico after years of simmering tensions between the two nations. Much of this animosity hinged on the status of the Republic of Texas which the US had annexed in December 1845, making it the 28th state to be admitted to the Union. The resulting Mexican-American War lasted almost two years and ended with a US victory, after they successfully occupied Mexico City in 1847. Through the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo that followed, Mexico ceded a vast amount of land to the United States, which corresponds to much of modern-day California, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Colorado, and Utah. The second development occurred around the same time as the Treaty of Mexico was being finalized. In the hills of California, American settlers had discovered gold. As word quickly spread of the exciting news, tens of thousands of people began preparing to head out west in search of their fortune. These settlers became known as the 49ers, as they first started arriving in California in large numbers in 1849. They traveled either overland along routes such as the Santa Fe, Oregon and California trails, or otherwise sailed from ports on the eastern seaboard south to Panama before trekking over land across the isthmus to the Pacific Ocean, then sailing north again to the coast of California. By the mid-1850s, some 300,000 people had arrived as part of the gold rush which dramatically transformed the demographics of the region and provided a fast track for California to be admitted as the 31st state in September 1850. The California Gold Rush was just the first event of its kind, which fueled a massive influx of people into the American West. Throughout almost every decade of the mid-late 19th century, 
countless discoveries of gold, silver, and oil were made across many of the unorganized territories of the United States. This led to the emergence of boom towns like Deadwood in South Dakota and Tombstone in Arizona, which quickly became the home to thousands looking to exploit these valuable resources and get rich. These towns also attracted entrepreneurs looking to cash in from the recent discoveries, with saloons, hotels, gambling dens and brothels quickly springing up. These effectively sought to mine the miners of any profits they had managed to acquire. As a result, many prospectors ended up leaving poorer than when they had arrived, but for those few who had gotten lucky and struck it rich, they decided to pack up their belongings and moved on to new ventures leaving virtual ghost towns in their wake. As new population centers began to sprout out of the region, so did new economies and markets. Livestock proved highly suitable on the rolling Great Plains, which occupied much of the center of the now continental United States. Cattle in particular were a highly valued and sought after animal to rear. Huge herds soon ranged from the ranches and cattle markets across Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado and further north into Wyoming, the Dakotas and Montana, and were driven by men who would soon become the archetypal symbol of the American West, the cowboy. The range of reasons for settlers heading out west varied enormously and did not simply pertain to those looking to better themselves economically. Utah, for instance, was largely settled by the Mormons from the late 1840s onwards, as their leader, Brigham Young, determined that a new land was needed for the followers of the Church of Latter-day Saints after they faced extensive persecution back east. The journey would be undertaken by approximately 70,000 Mormons over the next 20 years and resulted in the development of the Salt Lake Valley, which remains the heartland of the church to this day. Perhaps the most significant development that facilitated the increasing amounts of settlers into the American West was that of the railway. Although an already extensive and well-developed rail network covered much of the eastern side of the country, it was recognized that a route was needed to connect the Atlantic and Pacific coasts, which could then branch off and extend to the rest of the country. So it was, in 1863, that initial construction began on the first transcontinental railroad. However, the continuation of the American Civil War hindered any significant progress. Although the conflict primarily played out on the eastern side of the country, some fighting did occur west of the Mississippi River, which prevented any allocation of men, material or finance being diverted towards the project until after the war's conclusion in 1865. By that point, in the spirit of reconciliation and in an effort to heal the nation's divisions, the federal government began to focus its efforts on uniting the nation with the completion of the railway. The Union Pacific Railroad began laying tracks westward from Omaha, Nebraska, and the Central Pacific Railroad began the same undertaking eastwards from Sacramento, California. Six years after the groundbreaking, the two railroads conjoined on the 10th of May, 1869, at Promontory Summit, Utah Territory, when the last spike was driven in. Travel time between the coasts was now reduced from six months to little over a week. The development of the railroads were also supplemented further by other advances in technology, such as the telegraph, the telephone, and the steamship, all of which made it easier to travel and communicate across the country. Further incentives to entice settlers to move out west were made by the government, with the Homestead Act of 1862. This offered parcels of federally owned land for as little as $1.25 per acre, in the hope that any would-be settler would buy up a large tract and transform the uncultivated soil into highly productive farmland, which could then be used to support the ever-growing nation. Although the opening of the West provided many with the opportunity to better themselves through trade, commerce, or even striking it rich, it also provided some with the chance to acquire wealth through more illicit means. Due to the sheer vastness of the open country and the sporadic settlements that dotted it, Law and order was far more difficult to establish and maintain in the West than it was back East. Knowing that there was little chance of being caught and punished, men such as Jesse James, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid turned to a life of crime, preying upon the poorly guarded stagecoaches, trains and banks across the region. <laughs> 
In order to combat the reckless criminality that occasionally plagued the West, lawmen were hired to track down and bring to justice those who were wanted felons. Men like Wyatt Earp and Pat Garrett, as well as employees of the Pinkerton Detective Agency, became legends in the West as they attempted to bring law and order to the violent and dangerous frontier. Violence was by no means confined to the newly established settlements. As the United States continued to expand by absorbing the lands of the ever fewer Native American nations that remained, those tribes that refused to willingly give up their lands became increasingly determined to make a stand and fight for their way of life. Peoples of the Sioux and Apache nations in particular offered dogged resistance to the United States, which resulted in conflicts such as the Great Sioux War of 1876 and the Apache Wars of the 1880s. Native American leaders like Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse were at times successful in repelling the US Army, like at the Battle of the Little Bighorn. The Apache leader, Geronimo, similarly led bands of warriors on the warpath to ambush and raid American targets in Arizona and New Mexico. In order to combat the increasing threat posed from hostile Native Americans, the federal government began to increase its military presence across the frontier, with the construction of forts to house American troops more permanently. Ultimately, however, the overwhelming technological and military superiority of the United States meant that the remaining Native American peoples of the West were subdued and forced to move onto reservations to make way for more settlers. The settlers themselves, who were migrating westwards, were not a homogenous group. As the 19th century progressed, millions of more Europeans began migrating to the United States in search of a better life which was free from religious persecution, political instability and poverty. As they arrived in cities like New York, Philadelphia, Boston and Baltimore, the population of the East Coast began to explode and the numbers of urban poor in overcrowded slums began to increase. Over time, these people looked beyond the immediate ports of arrival and sought opportunity elsewhere, with the West providing an alluring opportunity with the offer of cheap land and a fresh start. Some nationalities were more represented than others in the settlement of the West, with the Irish and Germans being the most numerous to establish a new home for themselves in these regions. Additionally, Chinese migration from across the Pacific Ocean and into California played a significant role in the development of the United States, with many participating in the gold rush as well as working on the construction of the Central Pacific Railroad. Likewise, thousands of African Americans also found a new home for themselves in the West, particularly after the conclusion of the Civil War and abolition of slavery. Many found work as cowboys working on the trails from the 1860s to the 1880s, with as much as 25% of all herders and ranchers during this period being of African American descent. American westward expansion was not completely confined to the contiguous continental United States. In 1867, the government purchased Alaska from Russia. Although it remained a nominal territory for decades and was visited only by fur trappers and rare adventure seekers. However, in the late 1890s, the Yukon Gold Rush, just over the border in northwestern Canada, brought the first wave of extensive settlement to Alaska with some 100,000 prospectors journeying to the frozen far north of the country. In a somewhat different vein, far out in the Pacific Ocean, American missionaries had first begun arriving to the Hawaiian Islands in the late 1820s in an effort to convert the natives to Christianity. Over time, American businessmen became interested in the islands, primarily on account of the profits which could be made from the fruit industry. It was these same business interests which was supported by an aggressive American foreign policy that began interfering directly in the Kingdom of Hawaii's politics in the early 1890s, which eventually led to the annexation of the entire archipelago in 1898. As the 20th century dawned, the borders of the United States could now be seen as formally established and the vast expanse of the frontier began to close. The rapid advances in technology and mass influx of people in the second half of the 19th century had made the American West a much smaller space than what it had been just a few generations before. Federal governmental control now extended over the entire nation, with the Native Americans having reconciled themselves to its rule, or at least begrudgingly accepted it 
in return for compensation for the loss of their lands. The great gold, silver and oil rushes were also coming to an end, and the focus on urban development had begun to take shape across the region, from the Mississippi to the Pacific Ocean. As the last territories were officially converted into states, with Oklahoma being incorporated in 1907, New Mexico and Arizona following in 1912, and with Alaska and Hawaii not receiving formal statehood until as late as 1959, the Western American frontier had finally been tamed, and the modern United States began its next chapter to becoming the greatest superpower the world has ever seen.